Hi everybody and welcome to Hex Token channel, your host Superman in the house. Woo Let's have a clap everybody, let's have a clap, I don't know why, but we're going to have a clap, I don't know why that is, but uh, welcome, you're Superman in the house. We're having a special show, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a deep dive, uh, something a little different from the show on Hex Token channel, we're going to be looking at uh, Sam Bankman uh, article from Vox Exclusive, plus some of the latest updates around FTX and of course a Sam Bankman Friedman or SBF as they say. Uh, so we're going to get into a bit of this. hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be a bit more detailed than normal. Uh, so hopefully it's going to be a bit of fun for those that like to deep dive. Uh, we've got Wall to Wall in the house. Hey, good to see Wall to Wall. We've got BC in the Matrix as well. Uh, do get in the chat, though. If you have heard things that maybe I don't mention them during the live stream, get in the chat there and mention anything that you know. Make sure it's you know it has some factual basis at least. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's, let's have a good, a good time, as it were. Obviously, this as FTX and its uh, a ch child uh, c companies have uh, wrecked billions of dollars and millions of people have been impacted this uh, in the bear market. So we're going to deep dive into this, uh, and uh, hopefully this is going to be a bit insightful as well. Now, obviously, uh, we're looking at these uh, documents. Uh, you've got to take them for what they are. You've got to look at the people and take what they say for what they are, and you can decide uh, upon what you see. So uh, just remember that. We're going to have a little look at that. But anyway, let's get on to it, folks. I think we've got a few people in the house. We'll probably get a lot more people on during the live stream. Uh, and of course, welcome to the UK. Typically, you guys are up around about now, uh, up and around and about. So a big shout out to everybody there. All right, so let's get into it, folks. Here I am on FTX on uh, on um, Twitter here. And of course, uh, we've got the F FTX official account here. It's got 774,000 followers, uh, which is obviously pretty decent. And of course, FTX.com. Uh, there we go. And of course, uh, let's get into some of the latest stuff. So 14 hours ago, there was a press release from the FTX group that had, had established Kroll as its claims agent and all official documents filed with the U.S. Bankruptcy Court can be found on this link here. So we're going to check that out in a second. Let's have a look at the image here. So we've got FTX Trading Limited and approximately 100 uh, additional affiliated companies uh, together called the FTX Group. That's how many companies are involved in these uh, shambolic uh, uh, things in the centralized world. Today noted that by filing voluntary petitions for reorganization under Chapter 11, reorganization under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware, uh, the federal court, FTX Group is operating under the jurisdiction of the federal court and all company actions, including company transactions such as transfers and withdrawals, must be approved by the federal court. Uh, so there we are. FTX Group has established Kroll as its claims agent and all official documents filed with the U.S. Bankruptcy Court can be found online at this link here, which we're going to have a look at. FTX Group also noted that the only authorized and official Twitter account for the company is FTX underscore official, which is the one we're on at the moment, and all social communications from FTX Group and its executives will be relayed exclusively through this account, which we're on at the moment. So that was an update 14 hours ago. We had a couple other comments uh, since we have reviewed this in previous live streams, uh, we had some updates here. So the uh, first one here was a statement from John Ray, Chief Restructuring Officer and CEO of FTX Official, regarding Mr. Bankman Freed's recent public statements. We're going to talk about that during this live stream, so stay tuned. As previously announced, Mr. Bankman, Bankman Friedman resigned on November the 11th from FTX Official, FTX US and Almeida Research Limited, and, and their directly and indirectly owned subsidiaries. We're going to talk about that too. And finally, Mr. Bankman Friedman has an has an, uh, no ongoing role at FTX Official, FTX US, or Alameda Research, and does not speak on their behalf. So remember that as well. So that's kind of where we are at the moment. And of course, uh, we've got uh, John Ray, the restructuring officer, and of course, remember Ryan Miller uh, there as well involved. So uh, as uh, I think the liquidator. So pretty cool. Uh, let's jump over to uh, the Corol uh, link. Of course, this is for the Chapter Eleven bankruptcy on November the eleventh, twenty twenty two, and November fourteen. 2022 FTX Limited and 101 affiliated debtors each filed a voluntary petition to relief under Chapter 11 of the United States Bankruptcy Code and the United States Bankruptcy Court in the District of Delaware. The cases are pending before the Honorable John T. Dorsey and the debtors have requested joint administration of the cases under case number 2211068. Important information for the dates that are coming up. A hearing on the debtors' first day motions has not yet been set. Uh, this website will be updated with the date and time of the first day hearing as soon as uh, it is scheduled. And of course, you can see uh, the uh, details down below here. November 11th was the petition date. 
and November the 21st is going to be the Omnibus hearing. Uh, so there's probably a little bit of legal jargon there. There's also the first day motions as well, and there's also the parties involved here as well. So these are different parties involved in this, including the Office for the United States Trustee, United States Bankruptcy Court. Uh, so that's kind of who's in there. Haven't checked this uh, first day motions, but we'll have a quick look at this. Uh, and it's quite detailed. So we're, these are the first day motions. We're not going to get into a lot of that detail, but we're going to jump over to a post that made Richard Hart made about the extent of the companies involved in this uh, debacle, as it were. So here is the preliminary organization, day the 17th of November, 2022. You can see we've got West Realm Shires over here in Delaware. And of course, we've got Almeda Research, famous, right? And Clifton Bay Investments as well. And then FTX Trading down the bottom here, uh, is what we've got in terms of companies. Underneath of those are all these different companies that we talked about. Uh, there's probably, I'm assuming this is similar to the uh, court submission, and so around about 111 or so, although I have heard numbers much higher, about 134, but under the official documents, 111 companies. So uh, look at all of them. Amazing. So we're not going to deep dive into that. We can see at the top of this uh, little diagram, organizational structure here, we've got Sam Bankman, Friedman, the majority, Gary Wang, and Anishad Singh there as well as the owners. So uh, you know who's going on there. These yellow lines here, third-party investors, all linked in there as well. Uh, you can see involved in some of these company ownerships here. Um, so pretty interesting stuff there. We've got a third-party investors, 7.5% uh, in here, 49% in here, and so on. So it really is uh, some uh, you know other investors in play as well as uh, third-party uh, uh, companies that have been using uh, these uh, financial uh, platforms as well. So that's the extent of it. Pretty massive, right? Pretty massive. Anyway, we're going to get into uh, SBF now. We're going to go a bit deeper uh, after chapter, chapter 11, and we're going to get into uh, this article that we're going to be the main article we're talking about. Then after this, we're going to get into SBF's latest update as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. This is ba based on the 16th of November, 2022 by Kelsley Pepper, uh, Kelsley Piper, I should say. And of course, it's called Sam Bankman Friedman tries to explain himself. And of course, this is by Vox. So uh, we're going to be covering this as well. Before we do that, let's get into the chat. We've got a few more people arrived. So good to see you. We've got Groot in the house. Good to see you, Groot. Check my pulse. Good morning, Superman. 4 a.m. here in Massachusetts making coffee. You want one? Yeah, I'll have one too there. Check my pulse. But I think you probably need one at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's for sure to stay up. Good to see you in the house, by the way. Wookiees in the house. Woohoo! Good to see you at night as well. After Celsius went down, how in the world were people still living money on exchanges and yield exchanges? I have no idea now, Night Owl. Uh, at least we're not in that world, right? We're not in that world. Uh, DeFi is the place to be. Francis says, good morning. Good to see you, Francis, as well. Welcome to the chat there. And, of course, uh, check my pulse, Dartmouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so cool. Let's get into it. So who is Kelsey Piper here from Vox? Uh, so let's have a quick look at her profile. Uh, Kelsey Piper, their senior writer. Uh, Kelsey Piper is a senior writer at The Future Perfect. Vox's effective altruism-inspired section of the world's biggest challenges. She explores wide-ranging topics from uh, this mythical topic here. Uh, climate change to uh, artificial intelligence from vaccine development to factory, factory farms. She's interested in how uh, to bring prosperity to everybody on the earth, uh, how we fund and, and conduct science, how to make emerging technologies well, and of course, how to make sense of the world in confusing, uncertain and fast moving times. She writes the Future Perfect newsletter, which you can subscribe to. There we are. So that's her background. And of course, uh, she's, these are the articles, kind of articles this person is writing. It's good to have a little bit of a sense of who is actually uh, writing this uh, and doing this interview. Uh, so she's written obviously about Sam Bankman Friedman here with the interview that she had. Uh, she's talked about Elon Musk, billionaires of dual use technology. Now you can make what you want of her positions and her articles. Uh, we're just having a quick a quick overview to see what uh, what's the thinking going on this person. What are they covering and stuff like that. Mal Mal Malawi uh, scientists have a plan to fight one of the country's biggest killers. Uh, shrinking the ozone hole shows that the world can actually solve environmental crisis. Uh, this is probably completely conflating, but a uh, it's it's there. How to read a controversial uh, code print paper on COVID's origins, etc. So you can kind of see some of the articles she's written uh, in here as well. So we're going to move on from that. That is kind of the background bit uh, from the right, right, uh, the interviewer there, uh, Kelsey Piper on Vox, and this is dated the 16th of November, 2022, at 3:20 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, to give you a context, so it's just a little bit, what, about two days old, uh, something like that, a day and a half old maybe. Uh, so let's get into it, folks. This is a little detailed, so sit back with your cup of coffee and get those cookies out because this is going to be a bit more detailed than normal. After this, of course, we're going to get into uh, the uh, the latest as well uh, with from Bat Sam Bankman Friedman there. So uh, last night, Sam Bankman Friedman. Oh, let's get to the title actually because it's kind of cool. The fall, the fallen crypto CEO, and what went wrong? 
uh, why did he why why he did what he did and what lies he told along the way. So let's see how we get on here. Uh, it's not too bad as as we lead into this. So so far so good. Last night Sam Bank, Sam Bankman Friedman or SBF as they call him DM me on Twitter. Shock and horror. And uh, that was surprising. I spoke to Bankman Friedman via Zoom earlier in the summer when I was working on a profile of him. So I reached out to him via DM on November the 13th after news broke that his cryptocurrency exchange had collapsed with billions in customer deposits apparently gone. I didn't expect him to respond. Typically, people under investigation by both the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Department of Justice don't return requests for comment. Bankman Friedman, though, apparently wanted to talk about how FDX and his head fund Alameda Research had gambled with customer money with, uh, without, uh, he claims, realizing what they were doing. <laughs> it's already funny. It's already funny. All right, so uh, let's let's get on. Let's move on. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Now, I didn't realize it was going to start. I haven't read this, by the way. I, I didn't realize it was going to start off so funny. Anyway, so uh, he claims realizing what they were doing. That's got to be one of the uh, the highlights there. Look at that thing there. Realizing what he was doing. Oh, my gosh. This is unbelievable. Sorry, folks. Sorry. I didn't realize it was going to be such a comedy. All right. So about who gets lauded as a hero and who's the fall guy about regulators. And, of course, he's got F regulators here about what he regrets. Chapter 11, the decision to clear bankruptcy. That is a pretty big decision, obviously, to do that. And about what he would have done differently with FDX and Alameda. Uh, more careful accounting and off-board Alameda from FDX once FDX could live on its own. And, of course, you guys have probably seen that before. Uh, so we're going to pause there for a second. I'm going to get into the chat there. I think we've got a few new people else in the house there too. Property View. Uh, great comments. He's probably I appreciate that. It's a little different. We're going a deep dive in this live stream. Uh, a little bit more deeper than we normally do. And we've got Spike in the house getting wild. Here, Spike. Yeah, definitely getting wild. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, move forward. It's past midnight. Um, the Bahamas time uh, where Batman Friedman is reportedly still located. And we went back and forth on Twitter for more than an hour. He was, uh, he said, still working to try and raise the funding need to pay back all his depositors. Um, how on earth would you do that? I don't know. No, magic. Uh, he has obviously made magic before. Uh, as we message, I was trying to get a, make a sense of what behind the PR and the charitable donations and the lobbying, Batman Friedman actually believes about what's right and what's wrong. Interesting. That is a good question. And especially the ethics of what he did in the industry he worked in. Uh, looming over our whole conversation was the fact that people who trusted him have lost their savings. And of course, it's been millions of people and of course, billions of dollars, and that he's done incalculable damage to everything he proclaimed only a few weeks ago to care about. And of course, he's been in front of uh, committees, select committees and things like that, uh, espousing all sorts of rubbish around about crypto. And of course, he is uh, now the ultimate villain. Uh, so there we are. The grief and pain he has caused is immense. And I came away from our conversation appalled by how much what he said. Uh, but if these mistakes haunt him, he largely didn't show it. And uh, maybe they don't, maybe they don't. Maybe he's... Uh, Maybe he doesn't have that issue uh, as part of his personality character. I mean, something like 5% of people uh, are like that, aren't they? Uh, before his collapse, empire collapse, Batman Freeman was actively engaged in lobbying in Washington for a regulatory framework for cryptocurrency. Uh, help us, please, help us. Uh, he's better off doing nothing, right? Just don't do anything. Uh, and, of course, we know there's a lot more going on here with the Democratic Party, Ukraine, a lot of stuff, but we're going to uh, just read the article as it goes. While many crypto CEOs like Bankman Friedman's nemesis Binance uh, CEO, uh, uh, Cheng Ping, or CC Zhao, as we call, are openly skeptical of government regulation, as you should be. I think it's pretty healthy. Uh, Bankman Friedman has largely avoided criticizing regulators, and that's probably healthy to do that, too. This is not to uh, get too over the top there. A constructive criticism is fine, though, isn't it? But in our conversation, he dismissed their role. He characterized his past conciliatory statements like when he said uh, just last month that some amount of crypto regulation would be definitively good as little more than PR. In doing so, he, he all but confirmed the view of critics who have argued that his overtures to Washington were much more about image than substance. And I think that's probably fairly easy to say. But it's also about political favor as well and uh, the games that are played. So here's the first tweets uh, that uh, she's, she's got here. SBF, uh, and of course, this is the uh, interviewer here. Uh, and uh, so this is Kelsey Piper here. Uh, you said a lot of stuff about how you wanted to make regulations just good ones. Was that pretty much a PR too? And then, of course, apparently this is SBF here, so we're going to take it as written. Uh, there's no one really uh, out there making sure good things happen and bad things don't. Uh, usually there's... Uh, this is actually quite a reasonable time in the night, actually, for a crypto person, 10 o'clock in, in the night. And usually there's only one toggle, uh, do more or less. Yeah, just PR. 
uh, F regulators, he says, they make everything worse. They don't protect consumers at all. And that's generally true too. In fact, a lot of the time, they can actually make things a lot worse. So uh, does, it does seem like some kind of consumer protection would be good though. And I think that's fairly acceptable. I think consumer protections are fairly accepted. It's when they uh, go on enforcement rampages uh, blindly, that is the problem. Uh, like maybe regulation, regulators can deliver it, uh, but sure, it does look like consumers lose their shirts a bunch, uh, says the um, says Ke uh, Kelsey. Uh, agreed, uh, says SBF on both. It would be good, but regulators can do it. And then, of course, uh, Kelsey goes here and do uh, you you couldn't do it, and CZ sure isn't doing it. So who? And of course, C S SBF says uh, they can't actually distinguish between good and bad. Uh, just do more business or a versus do less business and put up more moats versus put up fewer moats. No one will. But you know, you want to know the truth. Woo -hoo, we're getting down some of the wire here. No one is, is no one's doing it in the rest of finance either. Uh, so there's probably a lot of truth to that too. SBF went on to continue, says, or for that matter, other areas of, of, are regulated. The FDA isn't helping. The giant crackdown on big tech has no point or goal or philosophy behind it. OFAC is a slowing, uh, slowly undermining US interests globally and is the single biggest threat to the US being a superpower. SESG has been uh, perverted beyond recognition, uh, says FBF. So Kelsey goes on to say, I'm sort of putting a picture together, a picture where you don't believe anyone is doing anything for good reasons. You don't believe the good guys are good. Uh, so why not make it big and then be the one who gets to decide what is what good is? And if you have to do sketchy stuff along the way, uh, someone, everyone else is doing it too, and plenty of them are worse, and people still like them as long as they win. Is that fair? And of course, SBF replies, uh, what we're left with at the end of the day is only the rich can in a nest. Uh, I'm not sure, quite sure what that's supposed to be. A nest, uh, only they can make or lose money. Uh, he says, so uh, that's it was a lot of truth in that, obviously. Uh, yeah, there's some truth to it, but uh, it's also true that I didn't want to do sketchy stuff. There are huge negative effects from it, and I didn't mean to. Uh, each individual decision seemed fine, and I didn't realize how big their sum was until the end, apparently. So uh, you can take that for what it was. Obviously, we think there's a lot of games going on, uh, especially le uh, leveraging the same asset values has been one of the criticisms. On being willing to behave e uh, unethically, one question on which I've seen widespread speculation is whether Bankman Friedman thought it was okay to do unethical things for the greater good, a position that hardcore utilitarians uh, which Bankman Freed has identified as in the past, might hold. That question happens to be one I asked him in the interview this summer, uh, which I had just re-listened to the night before our Twitter conversation. At the time, of course, I thought the ethical dilemma where Bankman Friedman was, had perhaps crossed a line was whether it was acceptable to run a crypto exchange in the first place and whether the, whether the good he claimed he meant to do uh, made it okay. A lot of people I said to uh, Bankman Friedman in the early interview uh, would think of starting a crypto company to make billions of dollars the way I would think of starting a tobacco company to make billions of dollars uh, deeply immoral. Presumably, uh, there's some line where you shouldn't do uh, something that had a bad, even for good reasons. I'm curious whether you think there's some line, and if so, what would uh, wh uh, where would you draw that line um, in terms of ethics? There's some line he told them me. Uh, then uh, the answer can't be there is no line, or else, you know, you could end up doing massively more damage than good. I think more generally, you could say, okay, fine, but it's like, subtract that out. Uh, but I don't think it's that simple either because there are a lot of complicated but important second order harms that come if your core business is bad for the world in terms of your ability to work with partners and your ability with partners uh, to work with partners in your philanthropic ethics. Uh, you, could, you could imagine that if the Philip Morris Foundation had really good ideas about how to improve the world, they probably would still have a really hard time working with the Gates Foundation. So I don't think it's more complicated. So I do think it's more complicated than that. And you have to seriously contend with the impact, uh, what impact is uh, of your direct work. I return to those questions in our Twitter conversation, those well-considered ideas about balancing ethical imperatives. It's not true, not really, he said now. And of course, we'll get into the tweets about this uh, ethics uh, line, red line in the sand as where I just re just re-listened to your conversation we had this summer Says, uh, says Kelsey about whether you should do unethical uh, crap for the, the, the greater good. And of course, uh, SBF says, what did I say? You were like, nah, don't do unethical crap. If, like if you're uh, running a, a Philip Morris, no one's going to want to work with you on a, a philanthropy. I always have trouble saying this word. Uh, philanthropy. There we are. I think I got it out there. huh? And uh, there's a risk of doing more harm than good, says uh, 
uh, Kelsey. But uh, even if you subtract that out, pretty not worth it. Yeah, says SBF. So there we are. I was, that's how quickly you get to the ethics line. I was uh, trying to figure out, like, if that was kind of a PR cutoff, uh, cut off the cuff answer. Man, all the dumb crap I said. It's not really, it's not true. Not really. Oh, my God. That's funny. I love it. Uh, quicksand people, eh? Quicksand people. Uh, yeah, I thought it might not be, says uh, Kelsey. Everyone goes around pretending that perception reflects reality. It doesn't. Uh, some some of the de decade's greatest heroes will never be known, and some of the most beloved people are basically shams. <laughs> There's some truth to that. Um, and so Kelsey said, uh, so you kind of don't believe in like doing unethical crap uh, as anything other than a judgment we bestow upon losers. And of course, a month ago, CZ was walking example of don't do unethical crap to, or, or your business is worthless. And now he's a hero. And of course, uh, it is uh, because he's virtuous or because he had the biggest balance sheet. And so he won. And so you heard me in my first live stream today uh, say exactly this about CZ. I said he had the big, he's the biggest balance sheet. And of course, he plays all parts of the chessboard and he wins. And this is exactly what uh, uh, this is the one thing I would agree with SBF on. Uh, and he won. And he certainly did one because he plays all sides. Uh, and of course, we saw those maneuvers, excuse me, very publicly. Well, uh, Kelsey goes on to say, well, I can see why you didn't give that answer in the interviews. Yeah. Huh? Uh, because, uh, so the ethics stuff, mostly a front. People like you if you win and hate uh, uh, people like you if you win. And hate you if you lose, and that's how it all really works. Yeah, I mean that's not all of it, but it's a lot. The worst quadrant is sketchy and lose. The best is win and question mark. So there we are. The clean plus lose is bad, but not terrible. And there's a lot of truth in that. So I don't disagree with those comments that uh, SBS is making them. Uh, you were you would uh, you were really good at talking about ethics for someone who kind of saw it as a game with winners and losers. Yeah, he <laughs> he. I had to be. That's what reputations uh, are made of. To some extent, I feel bad for those who get uh, effed by it. Uh, but this dumb game we woke Westerners play, <laughs> where we say all the right uh, shibboleths it's got here. And so everyone likes us, uh, he says. Um, so there we are. On bending the truth. So this is the next topic. And uh, we're about halfway through at this stage. So we're getting pretty much getting halfway through this interview. On bending the truth, Bankman Friedman has maintained that FTX has never invested uh, the deposits of crypto account holders on the exchange. Uh, I pressed him on that point on via Twitter. And while he continued to assess that FTX did not directly use account money in this way, he said that Almeida, which he also owns, had borrowed far more money from FTX's balance sheet for investments that he had realized, which ultimately left FTX vulnerable uh, to the crypto equivalent of a run, a bank run. And this is where we're getting down to the, uh, was it the Peter, uh, the bread and butter here? Uh, so pretty cool. Why didn't Bankman Friedman realize what was happening until it was too late? Sometime life, life creeps up, up on you, he said. Uh, so that's kind of where we're up to. We're going to pause there for a second and get into the comments. We've got probably a few more people in the house. Um, and Night Owl says, uh, SBF definitely employed by the government, says Night Owl. Uh, there's definitely that association, which we haven't come up to in this interview so far. SBF employed by the US government to take down CC's Binance from China. Uh, well, they failed to do that, didn't they? Uh, John says, good morning from Grand Canary. Let's go. Hey, good to see you, John. Uh, puppets for political elite, most likely untouchable. Yeah, there's obviously that. We haven't come up to that Democrat Ukraine uh, and, of course, uh, the busy China type of uh, links there as well. Check my boss says, hey, Superman, did you see a quote from JP Morgan? He says all fails in crypto were by centralized exchanges and he really likes DeFi crypto. Well, that's fantastic. Check my boss. That's great news. So good to see JP Morgan. That would be influential. So that's good. Uh, so here, let's get into uh, the rest of it. Uh, now we're getting down to really about uh, the borrowing uh, of the balance sheet uh, by Almeida there of the FTX balance sheet and, of course, playing with that money. And, of course, uh, let's see what he says about this. You tweeted out some stuff like, we never invest your deposits. Was that, was that, that was like BS, right? Uh, it was factually accurate. Uh huh. But, like, their deposits were totally not there. Or did it, do you just mean technically it was Almeida? Uh, FTX, correct, he says. Uh, and then, of course, so, so FTX technically wasn't gambling with their money. FTX had just loaned their money to Almeida, who had gambled with their money and lost it, question mark, and you didn't realize it was a big deal because you didn't realize how much money it was. Uh, and, of course, SBF says, and also, thought, uh, th I guess, this, uh, also thought Almeida had enough collateral to reasonably cover it. And, of course, uh, they shouldn't be playing with it in the first case, right? They shouldn't be even playing with it. Should have just been sitting there, right? Shouldn't be leveraging it out. That's what I said. If these guys play with the balance sheet, that's a no-no, no-no. Uh, so there we are. I get to I get how you uh, could have gotten away with it, but I guess that seems sketchy. Even if you get away with it, that was never the intention. Sometimes life creeps up on you. Oh my gosh! Oh, seriously, dude. Seriously, dude. People put deposits based on terms of service. Uh, seriously. Anyway, 
on what happened. Uh, let's see here. One theory is that the seeds of FTX downfall were sown earlier this year with, when Almeida reportedly took huge losses after the crypto company's Terra Luna stablecoin collapse. That's probably a fair comment. Um, I don't know the exposure to that myself, but that's probably a fair comment here. Batman Freeman said he didn't realize the extent of the problem because of messy accounting, albeit messy accounting to the tune of billions of dollars. And of course, we're going to get into the tweets about that. So uh, Kelsey Piper says, uh, was the Alameda thing when Luna crashed the first time customer deposits got lent out? That's what uh, people are saying. Or was it more like the accounting was such a, uh, such uh, that a lot of stuff that you were doing was implicitly backed by customer deposits? Uh, and either of those are bad, right? Uh, messy accounting plus margin exchange uh, position built up over time. So in retrospect, Luna crash was when a lot of it did. And of course, but messy accounting, I didn't realize the full size of it until a few weeks ago. Um, so uh, this guy's not quite as smart as uh, he's supposed to be, right? And uh, you can't keep on top of the accounting there. Uh, so that's a real problem there. So if you, if you could do it all over again, would you just take more careful accounting? Never touch customer funds, never go into crypto? Uh, more careful accounting and you know, off border meter from FTX once FTX could live on its own. That there's just dubious comment. That statement holders, this crap, right? That's a crappy statement. Um, so they're going to pay back all the loans that they borrowed from FTX deposit customers uh, that weren't supposed to lend out. Um, so I don't know. That's going to be funny. Man, the liquidation uh, court hearing is going to be absolutely hilarious with that, those details. Are there people who told you uh, you might be uh, more careful? Uh, pe there are people you've listened to? It's odd. I mean, maybe, but not really. And those who did, they did other things. Not that. It's odd. Everyone was so worried and concerned about dumb crap we did. Uh, we definitely uh, wouldn't do. And uh, that made no sense, he says. Everyone was so worried and concerned about dumb. Yeah, well, there we are. We got up to that. So uh, this is what Kelsey responded. But not about whether you are lending out customer funds. Seems like such an obvious thing for them to worry about. Uh, yeah, but it's complicated. A, it wasn't quite lending them out. It was messier and more organic than that. Each debt was in isolation, rational and reasonable. And when I finally added it up all last week, it wasn't. <laughs> it's like a drug addict that knows you're doing a criminal activity and you're trying to, you know, get or make heaps of money by doing it. And then it all just falls away because uh, you're not keeping track of the accounting or you don't, you know, the accounting's bad and you're just going to ride the, ride the, ride the, uh, the car into the, into the hill or something like that, into the cliff. Uh, B, most exchanges didn't, uh, did some variant of what we did, uh, that just not as big and without the run on the bank, at least recently and more intentionally. And that's probably very true. And we've seen that, I think, a lot of degrees. And that's why we're getting all of these proof of reserves, uh, which are not really fully proof of reserves uh, because of the liability side of it. You can keep lending it out, so, et cetera. Um, every, number C, everyone wants to be clever. And the clever thing to do is uh, some complicated 3D chess involving customer orders or data or something like that, which makes no actual sense. And there's probably a lot of truth to that, right? So we see a lot of that, a lot of that, uh, especially around centralized CPI stuff. All right, so uh, so there was no point of like, let's lend out a customer deposits, just various financial instruments that ended up adding up to that. And you didn't even see that they'd add up to that. Yeah, like, oh, FTX doesn't have a bank account. I guess people can wire to Almeda to get money on, on FTX. Three years later, oh crap, it uh, looks like people wired 8 billion to Almeda. And oh God, we basically forgot uh, about the, the stub account that corresponded to that. And so it was never delivered to FTX. Oh, how magic, how magic is that? This is getting worse as we go. So let, we're almost, uh, we're about uh, three quarters of the way through now this article on what he regrets. Batman Friedman acknowledged that he uh, effed up and but a big multiple times, but he also insisted that much of the trouble could have been avoided if FTX had, had not declared bankruptcy. And that is an important uh, turning point. Uh, to get to that point where you do that. And of course, now they're in the chapter 11 bankruptcy, as we saw, uh, with uh, which was largely taking financial matters out of his control during the process. Uh, and he's probably just botched it up even more, right? And he's been ringing around, trying to do deals. This is assuming he has any ethics, right? Uh, which he says that he has been doing at the beginning of the article, which has largely taken financial matters out of his control during the process. Beckman Freeman was replaced as CEO by uh, FDX by John Ray, which we just covered that at the beginning of the live stream. A lawyer who helped creditors recover billions of dollars after the bankruptcy of the energy trading firm Enron, which you guys probably heard about. Uh, the people in charge of the company are trying to burn it all to the ground out of shame, he told me. Oh, yeah, that'd be true too. Burn, you know, sh shred, all the, shred all the paperwork, uh, get rid of all the remaining funds. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, Batman Friedman, uh, the ship's going down, the ship's going down. And so they do even more perverse things as the ship's going down, right? Because uh, uh, And some of them don't want to face prison or anything like that. They get caught on the US soil or any, any place that has a... Uh, as a uh, treaty with them. So, yeah. 
Batman Friedman argues he should should instead have kept trying to raise more money and insisted that if he had just done that, withdrawals would be opening up in a month with customers fully whole, and that would have been a much better outcome. But of course, this is contingent on him trying to raise more money, and of course, uh, maybe the the uh, pyramid scheme gets bigger and bigger, and maybe it all falls down and get, it gets even magnified because this guy is already playing bad games. So uh, there we are. The Wall Street Journal reported earlier this week on Batman Friedman's efforts to find funding and found no indication any investors were committing. And who's going to do that, right? Who's going to do that? <laughs> uh, even CZ, who's playing the biggest uh, balance sheet game on the board, is like playing, this is another game, right? So, uh, and of course, the CZ comes as the hero, creates some fund uh, that uh, saves everybody. You know, magic, that, uh, isn't it? Um, if, even if uh, fresh funding were obtained, the paper continued would uh, create negotiations with FDX creditors and approval of the bankruptcy court. Well, he said that some of his colleagues, co-founder Gary Wang and director of engineering, Nishad Singh. So remember when we looked at the uh, the ownership here, this was the ownership. We had Gary Wang and Nishad Singh at the top, owning all these different companies, right? So uh, oh, with some third-party investors as well. All right, so uh, we're scared. And in the case of Singh, ashamed and guilty. Uh, so it sounds so Nishad Singh was scared and Singh was also ashamed and guilty. Uh, so it sounds like he had some degree of conscience, conscience there. Uh, so that's nice to see. Bank Friedman seems to maintain some emotional distance from the collapse. The world is never so black and white. And I think there's an old video, right, of SBF, uh, I'm pretty sure it's FBF, uh, that was uh, laughing about uh, companies going down. I'm not sure if it was FBF or somebody else. Uh, you can remind me in the chat there. There was a video of somebody saying, you know, they laughed about people going under. I'm not sure if it was FBF or another CEO, one of the other collapses that we had earlier in the year. Um, it says, SBF says on Twitter, I effed up uh, big multiple times. You know what uh, was maybe my biggest single uh, F up, he says. And of course, oh, uh, the one thing that every, everyone told me to do. And of course, everything would be 70% fixed right now if I hadn't. Uh, I'm trying to guess, but I have no idea. Chapter 11, he says, chapter 11, which is that chapter 11 now. Like, should have uh, just wrote it out and keep trying to make $8, million back, $8 billion back. Uh, if I hadn't done that, withdrawals would be opening up in a month with customers fully whole. And instead, I filed and the people in charge of it are trying to burn it all to the ground. Out of shame, I might still get there. Uh, but uh, after a way more collateral damage, he says, uh, and only 50-50, I'll take that. I'll take the uh, under on that, he says. Yeah, yeah, that's probably wise from Kelly. Uh, Kelsey, sorry, Kelsey Piper. Uh, SBF says, basically, we get there if we uh, either Gary or Nishad comes back or can we or can win a jurisdictional battle uh, versus Delaware. And, of course, that, that's all gone big now. Gary and Nishad are gone. Uh, yeah, scared. Or Gary is scared and the chat is ashamed and guilty, says uh, FBF. Uh, ashamed and guilty because all the customer deposits are gone. Uh, yeah, he says. Uh, so <laughs> uh, um, Kelsey gets, says, uh, people I've talked to have said Nishad uh, was uh, uh, much more into ethics and not being sketchy stuff than you were. Yeah, it hit him hard. I mean, it hit all of us hard, but it hit him hard with capitalized letters there. Uh, it seems like you have more of a sense of yourself uh, to fall back on more of a sense that you are only wrong if you lose. Interesting ethics, eh? You're wrong if you lose. You're right if you win. <laughs> and you're rich. You're rich as well. Uh, and he, uh, Or richer than you were on the losing game, in this case, probably. And he was more like, well, we stole money from people who trusted us. The world is never so black and white. And I would have to agree with that. But I think uh, this is looking pretty, pretty dark, dark gray. What do you guys reckon? It's looking pretty dark gray. On the hack of FTX, uh, shortly after FTX filed for bankruptcy, watches of blockchain transactions noticed someone had transferred hundreds of millions of dollars out of the company. I asked Bankman Freeman what was up. And remember, we covered this on the live stream that was happening. Um, so uh, well, pretty much in those those couple of hours that was happening. And uh, at the time, I think we got up to like 670 million on the two accounts that we were watching. Uh, and of course, uh, do you know what's actually, actually up with the money that got mysteriously moved out of FTX after the bankruptcy? Uh, that's the other thing a lot of people are speculating about. Hack, he says. Uh, either ex-employer or malware on an ex-employee's computer. A few hundred million, he says. Well, it was a lot more than that, wasn't it? Uh, but, of course, uh, then the, uh, the, they, the liquidator uh, went to seize and transfer all the re remaining funds. So it was a bit dubious there. Now, that's a separate topic. I say we're uh, pretty much 90% way through the article now. So we're just down to the final mile. On what's next, Batman Friedman says his number one priority now is to try to raise $8 billion to make account holders whole. Now, if he could do that, that'd be truly pulling out a rabbit out of the hat. <laughs> How can you do that, right? How can you do that? It's insanity, honestly. That's, uh, he told me, is basically all the matters uh, for the rest of my life. Uh, but while he said that a month ago, I was one of the world's greatest fundraisers that the 8 billion uh, dwarfs what FTX was able to raise so far. There's no indication any investors would buy it. 
And even if he could secure funding, it would likely require both creditors and the bankruptcy court to get on board. So uh, what's next? What's your plan? I have two weeks to raise $8 billion. So this is, I remember, on the 16th, approximately. Uh, so two weeks there. So that's uh, by the end of the 30th. Uh, and, of course, that's already been taken out of his hands, right? So we just read that at the beginning. Uh, the FT Exchange and uh, the, the CEO has uh, obviously said that, uh, uh, you know, he's not, not represent the company anymore. I have two weeks to $8 billion. That's basically all that matters for the rest of my life. And, of course, well, I hope uh, the depositors get the money back. But i got to say, I have no idea how anyone could possibly pull that off from the starting point, and neither do I. Well, a month ago, I was one of the world's greatest fundraisers. Uh, now I'm a, a fallen wreckage of one. But there's a thing about being fallen. There are people who know what that's like, and who were uh, want to do uh, for who want to do for someone else what nobody did for them. Uh, this morning, I emailed Batman Freeman to confirm he had access to his Twitter account, and this conversation had been with him. Still, me uh, not hacked. We talked last night. He answered. His lawyers did not return a request for comment. So that is the article, folks. Uh, and, of course, that was from uh, Kelsey Piper there uh, who had the interview, as you can see. So that's the uh, update on the 16th. But we've got uh, updates that SBF did on Twitter, and we're going to go through that. Um, so uh, stay tuned. This is our second part of the live stream. And I hope you guys are enjoying get, you know, deep diving a bit more into this because it's kind of fun. I hadn't read any of that, by the way. So I was just reading it with you guys live, which I love to do. Uh, it's just a lot more fun. Uh, let's get into a couple more comments that we've got in the chat here uh let's have a look here uh we've got night owl says all the scams in crypto were altcoins in the last bull market that's true uh, this time around it's yield exchanges yeah that's uh very true the night owl uh hey all pulse tubes in the house hey pulse tube big shout out to pulse tube if you haven't checked out pulse tube man uh check out pulse tube with all the pulse chain hex youtubers on there such a great site and really appreciate uh and neutrality on there as well so people can just cover uh crypto without uh, having fear of being uh, gatekept i love that uh, so wonderful site as well. Uh, Pulse Tube, if you can get hold of me on Discord, I have a few ideas for you as well. Uh, so definitely uh, hold, get on when you've got some time. That'd be great. Uh, John says, Superman, do you think Pulse Chain could also do a fork of B on BSC? Uh, well, I think they're just doing proof of stake, which I think is the future. Proof of stake is the future as opposed to proof, uh, opposed to proof of work, uh, possibly with the exception of, you know, uh, a couple of the top chains like uh, Bitcoin, for example. Uh, Stevie D says, hey, Superman and all of my Hex family. Good to see Stevie D uh these non nonchalant texts are planned uh planned for he's an idiot says night owl uh well he's a he's a rich idiot probably uh they're night owl probably a rich idiot uh smash the likes is group definitely yeah man cool says pulse tube nice one right so let's uh let's get into uh the latest update here and of course this actually funnels through from the 14th uh through to the 17th so this is kind of the latest from sbf himself on twitter now he put this out earlier do you remember even richard responded with some letters uh, like this I think he was trying to, uh, I'm not sure if he was mocking him or what he was doing, but uh, uh, SBF said on the 14th, what? And we're like, what the heck's he doing? And then he goes, uh, at 14th, he goes, H. And then he goes, 15th, A. And then he goes, the 15th, P. On the 15th, he did another P. On the 15th, did an E. And then on the 15th, he did an N. And then he put uh, on the 15th, did an E and a D. So what happened? He's typing in there. Uh, and he started that from the 14th into the 15th. So crazy stuff, right? Uh, and uh, there we are. So finally, we get to something there on the 15th. Uh, on the 10th, yeah, not legal advice, not financial advice. This is all uh, as I remember it, but my memory might be faulty in parts. Uh, number 11, uh, I get to uh, I get to what happened, but for now, let's talk about where we are today. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, on the 16th, so there's the 16th here, as of post the 11th of the 7th there, um, uh, with the potential uh, for errors, Almeida had more assets than liabilities. Uh, M2M, and of course, uh, but not liquid. Uh, Almeida had margin position on FTX. Uh, FTX US had enough to repay all customers. Not everyone necessarily agrees with this, uh, says SBF. 13, my goal, my one goal is to do the right by customers. I'm contributing what I can uh, do uh, to do. Uh, what I'm trying, I'm contributing what I can to doing so. Um, I'm meeting in person with regulators and working with the teams to do what can uh, what we can for customers, and uh, after that, investors. But first, customers, he says. My goal, uh, clean up and focus on transparency. Number B, make customers whole. Uh, he'll have to pull out a miracle for that. Uh, number 15, a, a few weeks ago, FTX was handling, you know, $10 billion a day of volume and billions of transfers. I know it's insane what's going through these exchanges, even with was trading and things like that. It's pretty amazing. But, but there was too much leverage, more than I realized, I uh, run I run on the bank in market cash, a crash, exhausted liquidity. So what can I try to do? Raise liquidity, uh, make customers whole and restart. 
Maybe I'll fail. Maybe I won't get anything more for customers than what's already there. I certainly failed before. You know how uh, uh, you all know uh, that now all too well. But all I can do is try. I failed enough for the month. And part of me, <laughs> I've failed enough for the month. Yeah, that's 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 a true stuff. Is that true or is it understatement? I don't know. You decide. And part of me thinks I might get somewhere, he says. Well, you know, if he can try, go try. But uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, I know uh, I know you've all seen this, but uh, here's where things stand today, roughly speaking. Uh, liquid, uh, negative 8 billion. Uh, semi, uh, I guess it's negative 8 billion. Semi, 5.5 uh, billion. And a liquid, 3.5 billion. And yeah, maybe the 9 billion liquid MTM isn't uh, worth 9 billion. Maybe 1 billion net. Uh, ATOH, a month ago, it was worth 18 billion plus uh, 10 billion net. Uh, and how times change so quickly. Uh, Truth and beauty, he says, number 18. Number 19, once upon a time, a month ago, FTX was a valuable enterprise. FTX had 10, point, uh, 10 to 15 billion of daily volume and roughly 1 billion annual revenue, 40 of billion of equity value. And we were held as paragons of running an effective company. How times have changed. I was on, if he just managed the balance sheet as it's supposed to, uh, he would have been fine. I was on the, cast, the cover of every magazine and FTX was the darling of Silicon Valley. We got overconfident and careless uh, and problems were brewing larger than I realized. Again, these numbers are approximate to the best of my knowledge, etc. Leverage built up, $5 billion leverage, backed by $20 billion of assets, which were, well, they had value. FTT had value in EV uh, and, of course, economic value there, but had, uh, but they had risk. Number 22, and that risk was correlated with the other collateral and with the platform, and then the crash came. In a few days, in a, uh, in a few a day period, there was a historic crash with uh, over 50% in most correlated assets with no bid side liquidity. And at that same time, there was a run on the bank. You know, these guys are just not used to these bear markets either. So, uh, that's, uh, you know, just lack of experience and as well as being um, unethical and doing silly stuff with balance sheets. Uh, roughly 25% of custom assets were withdrawn each day, 4 billion. As it turned out, it was wrong. Leverage wasn't 5 billion, it was 13 billion. 13 billion leverage, totally run on the bank, total collapse and asset value and all at once, which is why you don't want that leverage. Uh, no kidding, buddy. Uh, you can do it, but you just got to run it properly. You just got to run the accounting properly. Uh, last night, and of course, uh, I talked to my friend of mine. They published my message. Those were not intended to be public, but I guess they are now. Um, so there we are. Do you think you've processed the magnitude of what just happened? I feel like I haven't processed it at all uh, yet, and I wasn't even at the centre. And of course, damn man, says uh, so lots of uh, betrayal there. But what do you expect when you have this uh, millions of people and billions of dollars disappear? Um, and so, well, that gives me some colour, I guess. It sucks. I'm really sorry that things ended up as they did. And as I said, I'm going to do everything I can to make it more right. Uh, a few thoughts. It's really hard to be a regulator. They have an impossible job to regulate entire industry that grow faster than their mandate allows them to. And so often they end up most mostly unable to police as well as, uh, as they ideally would. Well, I disagree with the sentiment, actually. Uh, I think that uh, they've got, you know, the, the regulators have got, taken the wrong route. They've gone on an enforcement route as opposed to a dialogue route. And I think that uh, that needs to be taken place uh, with, uh, you know, industry people, not just centralized, because obviously a lot of problems are coming from centralized. They probably should probably have a fair amount of decentralized uh, voices on, on those conversations. That's probably where they should go. 28, even so, there are regulators who have deeply impressed with me, their knowledge and thoughtfulness. The CFTC has the SCB and VARA too, and others scattered. Yeah, but most are overwhelmed. 29, which means that interacting with regulatory structures can be really frustrating. A huge amount of work, much of it arbitrary and relatively little customer protection. Uh, if that, he says, you are all deserve frameworks that let regulators protect customers while allowing freedom. And I would agree with that. That's the right trade-off there. Um, but getting that at the moment is a tough one. 30, some of those, some of the, what I said was thoughtless uh, or overly strong, and I was venting and not intending to, that to be public. I guess at this point, uh, what I write leaks anyway. Apparently it does. And of course, in the future, uh, I'm going to care less about dumb, contentless, a good actor framework. What matters is what you do. Is actually doing good or bad, not just talking about doing good or using ESG language. I agree with them on that. That's true. Anyway, number 30. Anyway, none of that matters now. What matters is doing the best I can and doing everything I can for FTX's customers. So that is pretty much the last update there, folks, uh, as well. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. That is the latest and greatest. And, of course, uh, this is where they're at officially uh, with the restructure. Um, so uh, they've got their first, as we say, um, first uh, hearing coming up here on the 21st omnibus hearing and so forth. So uh, it's going to be a fun, fun thing. 
we'll probably get a lot more detail, a lot more accurate numbers and accounting, hopefully, uh, out of this. Uh, so uh, that's probably going to be the big, the cool thing uh, as well. So it's actually getting some actual numbers from people who actually know how to add up numbers. Uh, and John Ray should be able to do a good job of that. So uh, going to be interesting, folks. Uh, Woohoo! Rock on. So I hope you guys enjoyed that deep dive. Uh, I certainly enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and of course, I read all that without having seen it before. I just uh, pulled up the things I wanted to talk about and go for gold. So it was a bit of fun there. Uh, what else we got there? We got a couple of comments in the chat there. Uh, we got Joanne says, Thank you, Superman. Hey, you're welcome. We've got Night Owl as well. SBF reminds me of Beavis or Butthead. Amazing things happen to Beavis and Butthead, and they were idiots just getting lucky. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, you know, there's a lot of intentionality in here, and that will gonna come out too. Uh, what their actual intentions were. So, uh, yeah, looks like we've got a few little spams in there. I'm going to have to delete those. We've got no moderators in the chat from the looks of it. Uh, so let me remove uh, move those. Uh, rid of one of those. Cool. All right. So uh, we've got Night Owl says, what is love? Baby, don't hit me. Don't hit me. Says Night Owl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, figure it out. Say, Kat, figure it was a pleasure. Hey, said, man, what, what uh, B time do you call this then? Hope you are doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well there, Craig Bigger. Hope you're well too. Um, I know that you're looking forward to that cruise ship, uh, uh, the eggs cruise ship. That's going to be fun. Hashtag jealous from my part. Uh, I know it's going to be good, good time. Right, so that is some of the cool stuff there. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Uh, now, I have uh, started a new channel. So if you haven't seen that on uh, the community tab, uh, it is uh, 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 the bird is freed. Uh, so it's uh, uh, Twitter and uh, Elon Musk and uh, uh, news and uh, a meme channel. Uh, so you can uh, definitely check down the community tab if you want to go and subscribe there uh, on YouTube as well as uh, on uh, Twitter as well. So uh, go check out some of those videos. We're going to be doing more and more of that, pulling that channel up. Uh, so look forward to that. So cool. All right, we're going to wrap up now. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, I'll probably do a couple more of these, uh, more deep dive stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, hit the bell, all that good stuff. I will catch you guys next time. Let's play out some, uh, I think we'll just play our cool, our cool uh, intro exit video. Check my pulse says, good stuff, Superman. I appreciate that. I take care, everybody. It's currently here uh, 10 to 11 in the, in the evening. Uh, it was a bit of a late one for me, um, but uh, it was worth doing for sure. And it's always a pleasure to see everybody in the house. Uh, yes, crew should be good. Thank you, says Cape. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, I know it's going to be fantastic, Cape Figure. I'm sure it's going to be an absolute blast. I look forward to some videos uh, or some little excerpts from you as well. Um, Walter Wall says, is there a site to check the perpetual percentages? Uh, yes, I think you can get into our Discord. I think we've got that on the dashboard and the useful links under uh, Maximus projects. Let's go into useful links. Maximus should be able to get to that. Um, and of course, I think uh, Dipcatch is also working on a on a poly dashboard. He's been working on that today as well. So hopefully we'll get uh, catch that. Premium premiums exception says World Walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hex and Batman's in house. Yes, yes. Uh, and of course, uh, Kate Figure. Sorry, Mr. Stream. Take care. It says Kate Figure. Hey, you're welcome, man. Always a pleasure, man. All right, so take care, everybody. Bye for now. I'll catch you guys tomorrow for my normal live stream. And uh, yeah, take care, everybody. All right, let's uh, let's punch this out. Yeah.